Hello everybody, John here, and today onto the garage. Very excited to be testing the Top Don battery tester with novel feature that I love. Hi everyone, regulars amongst you will remember that not very long ago I did a test on another product from Top Don, the Artlink 600. In fact, if I just open one of my drawers, there we go, prepare a head and all that John, eh? Uh, yeah, which is an OBD2 uh, reader, scanner, um, code, deleter, etc. And was thoroughly impressed. I was also quite impressed that at the time I did tell the people from Top Don who sent me that for nothing, thank you very much, and give us a discount code for subscribers. But uh, I'd only do it if I could say exactly what I wanted without edit. And yeah, I even shared my reservations about it and they were fine with it. So I was even more <laughs> impressed when I said, would you like to try another one of our products? And this one is, is particularly exciting for me. I, I think it's a game changer for me. And that is uh, their battery tester BT300P. Same situation. Um, I'm only doing this because I can say what I want about it. So full disclosure, it has been provided to me free of charge, but you will be getting my genuine opinions. And today what I want to do is take a look over it and try it out. This is not an unboxing because I've been in there and had a play, uh, but I've never used it. Genuinely never plugged the thing in. As I'm on my bench in front of my calendar, I can't not mention that. So it is now just flicked over into October. So we're gonna say bye-bye to Peter Golding and his 1996 XK8 called Grandad's Jag. I think you pronounce it Mallorca. That's the way I've always pronounced it. But Mallorca is how it's phonetically spelt. And hello to it's a gorgeous picture of Rosaria and John Monty's 2003 XK8 in North Tonawanda, New York. And that is a beautiful, beautiful picture. Obviously got some real uh, sentiment to it there for the takers, but a very nice artistic picture. Really what our cars are about. I'm working on the 2023 XK8 XKR calendar at the moment and as soon as I've got something to show you guys I'll share it on a, on a video. But on to the gadget. So here we are, the battery tester BT300P, uh, made by Top Don again. Bits and pieces on the box, not going to bore you with, but yeah, simple, accurate, all, all the normal things. Built-in printer. For me, that's the game changer. I'll come on to that in a moment. Um, 30 amp hour to 200 amp hour means that this is gonna be good for all the batteries that I've got on vehicles and the leisure batteries as well. The styles of batteries that they're saying is okay for is the regular flooded, which is still the majority of batteries on cars, AGM flat plate, AGM spiral, gel and EFB. And this does the cranking test and the charging test, as well as checking the battery out itself. So you open up the box, and the first thing you're met with is a really nice storage bag. As with most of the stuff on me, it's very rare I keep the cardboard boxes. They just clutter and get in the way, but nice bag, carry handle, reasonably tough stuff. Something I would actually keep it in, in my drawer of my garage. Here's the interior. A um, Couple of pockets on this side with unusually, a couple of till rolls inside there for the printer. It's got a thermal printer. Then there's a pouch that contains the cables and a pouch 
that contains the gadget and the instruction book. This particular version of the instruction book is entirely in English and German. So, you know, it was a small book, but a reasonable amount of information in there. It's not just a single page. And I have read through it and it appears that everything is nice and easy to follow. And I felt I understood it. We'll find out in a minute if I really did understand it or not. So we do have instructions. Let's look at the product itself. As I say, I've genuinely not used this. You're going to see me use it for the very, very first time. But I have looked at it. And the first thing, if we start with the cables, I was quite impressed with these cables. Not unraveled them until now. Let's get that all straight. So I like the fact that we've got this Y splitter means that you've only got two shorter lengths rather than two that are going to twist themselves up and get in a mess. I liked this bit, which anchors the outer to the cable grip itself and means you're not going to pull at it. And I was particularly impressed with the gripper itself um, if you look on the end, you can see that the, the teeth, if you like, mesh, which is not always the case on this sort of thing. But also, if I open the jaws, you'll note there's a wire that connects this jaw to the other jaw. The other jaw being the one which is properly connected to the cable. And with the majority of crop clips, even on very decent uh, battery chargers and associated kit, only one of the legs is positively connected to the cable. The other just relies on the hinge or the spring to transmit it. These guys have actually got a, an interconnecting wire to make sure you're getting a really good connection on both sides. So all bodes well and nicely insulated. Um, very nice. Here's the unit. First impressions are very much like the OBD2 scanner ad from Top Don, in that the case itself feels really robust. It's got rubber inserts, but if they're not rubber, they really do feel like it. It's not rubber paint. Um, on a robust case where I can try to twist and it doesn't creak or move. Um, I'm not a fan of faux carbon fibre, but it does have this faux carbon fibre um, fascia panel, which I guess will hide scratches. Um, ooh, we've got the joy of peeling off a, a film. Ooh. There we go. So we've got our nice screen. Genuinely rubber buttons. Again, not just rubber paint on hard plastic. With print on them. So again, don't get um, brake fluid particularly, but other solvents on your fingers when you're pressing these. I'll just tend to uh, wipe off the print. It's not going to be a big issue when you've only got four buttons, three and a rocker. You will remember what to do. But I suppose, you know, a really minor improvement might be to emboss the M letter, the exit, etc., onto the keys. But I, I am really picking flies for the sake of it at that. Um, on the back, just a spec. Um, there is no hatch to put any batteries in this. This is again why I think this is good stuff. As a piece of kit you're going to use in your garage, you don't want to pull it out the drawer after one year of non-use and find that the battery's flat or worse still, that they have uh, split or furred up and damaged your device, which happens when you leave things in cold, damp environments. This doesn't have a removable battery it's going to run using the power of what it's connected to. And underneath this flap here, the little serrations give it away. There's access to the till roll for the little thermal printer. Now, why am I so excited about this having a thermal printer? <laughs> um, I do check the condition of the batteries on my cars quite regularly. 
I've typically got four cars in my little fleet, maybe five sometimes if I'm doing a project. And a lot of them don't get driven that much. And I change the batteries when I buy them for new batteries. I'm quite good at writing the date that the battery was installed on the batteries. And probably every six months, I'll connect up a multimeter and check voltages uh, while static and check that the alternator is doing something when it's running. And that's as far as it goes. But I never write down what the voltages is. Voltages are, sorry. I never write down what the voltages are. So although I've learned things are fine, I haven't recorded the trend. I haven't got anything going on there. My idea with this is, if this is a good piece of kit and I like it and I get on with it, whenever I check my battery, I can print off the condition and tape it to the side of the battery. Hence, next time I go to check it, I know exactly what it was like and when. So for me, this is quite an exciting and useful looking tool. Right, so there's not a lot else to say. Looking at this, you've got these physical buttons, up, down, M, exit, and enter or print. It's not gonna light up because there's no batteries in it. So let's get it on the car. So here's Purdy, my 1996 Jaguar XK8 convertible. Battery's in the boot. So I'll open that up and we'll get in there and do a little bit of testing. So as discussed, you can see on here, 7th of the 3rd, 20. Uh, today is the 1st of October, 2022. So literally we're two years into this battery. This one's got a five year guarantee, but this is a Jaguar XK8. So I, I would suggest that mine is on its last but one, maybe two years. Uh, it's given me no grief. I do do some trickle charging on it, but this battery has not been touched either starting the car or uh, trickle charging for over a month. I have no doubts it'll start. Um, the car's in pretty good condition. I don't have any parasitic drain that's not standard or expected and it does have a little indicator here that shows a green float which indicates that things are okay so we're looking at a good battery i'm taking the battery clamp off that's just for the cosmetics of this video um, there is no need whatsoever to remove it for testing can now see it's a UASA Silver 5000. It's a 12 volt, 100 amp power and 900 amp cranking voltage battery. What we're gonna do is connect our positive over here. Nice and secure. And our negative or earth over here and straight away things are starting to happen on our top down machine okay so plugged in let's see bring up it brings up first of all battery test and we're going to go for that so we press and it says are you a regular flooded agm gel or efb battery we're regular flooded what is the standard? And we've got a wide range of options and basically they reflect the standards used in various countries and by various batteries. In the little booklet, you've got some descriptions of those. But for now, all we need to know is CCA, cold cranking amps, is the standard used most places and it's the standard I'm gonna use. So we're gonna go enter and that's brought up 500 cold cranking amps mine is actually a 900 amp battery so we're going to use the up button to adjust that to a setting close to 900 what have we got 
and it scroll, I hold it down and it scrolls. Oops, 900 amps. And then we press enter. Testing occurring. And there's my result. Health, 93%. Charge inside the battery, 85%. Internal resistance, 3.46 ohms. I've got nothing to compare that to, but as we're going good battery, we can assume that's good. Most important is, of course, is it going better or worse over time? The battery is rated at 900 cold cranking amps. And right next to the health, we've got 867 cold cranking amps and charge 12.51 volts so yeah that makes sense 85 percent charged i'd expect a really good battery to be charged up to 13 8 13 9 14 volts something like that so this is looking quite interesting now what so what happens at this stage if i press the enter print button What happens is that gets caught. Now I'm going to blame me because I had the lid open. But you know, that happened. Let's press it again. Hee hee! This is excellent. So we've got all that information recorded nicely on a slip of paper to which I will add the date and tape to the side of the battery. Well, let's come out of this and let's look at the cranking test. Enter. Please start engine. It's giving me a 30 second uh, window, so I'm going to go to the car and start it. What that's given me is cranking time 1046 milliseconds which is just over a second and the voltage whilst cranking went down to 10.96 that's saying good again I've got anything to compare to but the fact that it didn't really drop much below 11 when under its biggest strain suggests to me that's pretty decent a second to start yeah, Jaguar four liter engines, they take some starting. Some modern cars will start almost instantaneously. Um, these have to actually turn over a couple of times. So I, that sounds good. But again, it's being able to reflect on it later that's important. I'm gonna press print. Charging test. Start engine, press enter, I have. ripple test. I guess that's just getting a tiny deviations in voltage. Increase engine speed to two and a half and keep it there for five seconds, then press enter. Brilliant. Loaded voltage 14.2, unloaded 14.23. Enter. Review data. What did that give? Uh, so that's going back to the initial um, readings. So we can go enter. Well, I am completely made up with this. I can't even pretend I've got any issues with it. So this is gonna get taped to my battery. Um, there's some really good information on there. 
I've got no reason to disbelieve any of this info. And to be honest, even if the accuracy in terms of calibration isn't perfect, it's the relative values that are most in, important and interesting. So how does it compare from one test to the next? Now I redid this and you can see that the charge is up to 100%. If you remember, I also printed it after the first start, following a month of being laid up, and it was on 85% charge and 12.51 volts. So, you know, that's again good. Also, the battery health, if anything, is slightly lower after I'd started it, played around and restarted it. So this is good. This shows consistency and makes me want to believe the detail in these numbers. Internal resistance is a really, really useful indicator of battery decline. So as short circuits and bad connections start to appear within your battery, so your internal resistance will start to climb. So I've got 3.46, 3.48, essentially identical. I will be keeping an eye on those as we go forward. And if the only test you did was this, you know, it's giving you the key information. We've also got the charging condition. This is telling us about our alternator. And the fact that it's charging at 14.23, 14.22 loaded, tells me great things. Ripple test, I'm gonna to have to look up. If anybody watching this is uh, more into batteries and battery testing than me, just tell us what the ripple test or ripple result is. Um, nine millivolts. If I was guessing, I would say that's the variation in the charge coming from the alternator. Um, but I genuinely don't know. That's I've never heard the expression. Cranking voltage. That's how much is left to try and start the car and run its systems whilst you are doing your cranking. So 11.28 on this result. And it took almost a second, 0.9 of a second, to start the car. And again, you see these vary with condition of the battery. Just done the same test and report on my VW T5, which has a brand new alternator, but a battery that's maybe six years old. So what we saw when I did first test was it says, um, battery test, retest after charging. Charge, 0%. Voltage, 11.9. Health, 65. Um, 307 amp. Rated at 380. Internal resistance, 5.48. Then we went on to the cranking. And it dropped down to 9 volts. And took 2.9, nearly 3 seconds to start. And finally, the charging at 14.53, no load, 14.5 under load, ripple, 40 millivolts, is that? Ripple, 49 millivolts. So I think the charging is probably an indication of what a good car should look like. And this, to me, smacks of a battery that probably needs to be swapped. Um, I should be looking at it very carefully in future. So I couldn't be more pleased. I literally have nothing to say in terms of could be betters um, other than I'm not a fan of faux carbon fiber, which is so petty, I almost want to retract the statement. And yes, maybe the keys could have a recessed M up and down, but yeah, again, that, that is being pretty bloody picky. That is being pretty picky. This is a great product and at a great price as well. Um, you can buy cheaper battery testers with the same functionality, but I've never seen one with the integral printer. And yes, you could write all this stuff down. You could take it in and print it on. The convenience factor is just so high for me. I will use this and I will create these and I'll put them on four or five car batteries in my fleet twice a year. And whenever I'm playing with friends' cars and fixing them, this will come out because it's cool. Really impressed. Really very, very impressed. Thank you so much, Top Don. 
So I'm going to put a link to um, this product in the description below. As I said, I was giving it free, but the thoughts are entirely mine. Um, if you like this video, watch more, uh, subscribe, give us a thumbs up. Let us know your comments in the description below on this piece of kit. Do you have something better? Do you have anything worse? And do you know anything about ripple testing that you can just share with me a little bit more information? Because I'd be really, really keen to know. See you soon. Bye. If you're enjoying our channel, then don't forget to subscribe and click the little bell icon so you get notifications of new videos. And please give us a thumbs up or thumbs down and you can share the videos. And below the video is always the area where you can comment and get involved with the chat.